You mentioned the Partner Summit. Um, you're not the only league that does it. Many teams, leagues do it. Can you talk about the importance of bringing all those decisions and brand you know, together on a value for them and then also a value for you guys and, and why you, where you're looking to differentiate the Partner Summit and what that means for everyone yeah. involved? Yeah, first I think it starts with the, the host club and we've got a great opportunity with the Columbus Clippers here. We're at Huntington Park, which is a phenomenal ballpark. Um, they've served as unbelievable hosts for this event. And I think part of the vision behind our Partner Summit is how do you create an event that's unique, that's different? You know, all those folks that attended last night and will be with us today, you know, they're going to the Super Bowl, they're going to the World Series, they're going to a bunch of different Partner Summits. So how do you, how do you differentiate that? And I think that's been top of mind. And I think there's a lot of creative things that we'll do, um, not the least of which signing a professional contract for all these people that are here. It's not every day you get to do that. Um, but it's also the, the content, you know, and I think people are going to leave uh, the, the, uh, last night and today with a really fresh understanding of, of what's keeping us up at night, where we're focused, and where as partners they can help us get there. Yeah. And I think the great thing about the collection of folks that we have, and it's a collection of existing partners, we've got a great portfolio of existing partners, but it's also a collection of, of big brands that are starting to take notice and that are looking at minor league baseball as a potential opportunity they're all in this together yeah. and they're all bought into the vision and, and where we're trying to take this which i think is really important so I, I could not be more excited and proud of last night and what we're going to experience today i think it's just um you know just the tip of the iceberg we're just getting started yeah and i think uh it's a sign of things things to come yeah you mentioned things keeping you guys up at night what are the things keeping you up at night you know what are the five seven things that David Wright looks in his notebook every night and says, we need to get this done, or you know, I'm watching this trend. Yeah, well I think you mentioned a trend. I mean, this industry is moving a mile a minute. I mean, it is evolving by the day. And if you look at some of the, the leading properties, where they're investing and how they're evolving is a big part of why they're so successful. Yeah. So for me, and, and a lot of what our senior leadership uh, thinks about is how do we continue to evolve? How do we continue to innovate so that we're ahead of the curve? We're not following or chasing, but we're actually ahead of the curve. Um, the other thing too, yeah, I would call out is, is this notion of next generation fandom. We've got uh, 111 million people that are self-designated fans in my life baseball. We've got 42 million people going through turnstile. But if you're gonna get to that 50 million and you're gonna grow that 111 million, what are you doing to widen that swath? And further to that, what are you doing to deepen the connection? And so next generation fandom is something that we spend a lot of time thinking about um, as we look to the future. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, the future, obviously, it's hard to predict the future, right? If, if we could predict the future, we would all be millionaires um, or more than that, right? So as you look and, and beyond the 50 million fans and beyond that type of goal, as you settle into this role and, you know, maybe it is 10 years, maybe it's 15 years, what do you see this evolution of minor league baseball looking like and, and where would you like to be in five years from now? Well, I think the evolution is one where, um, you know, we've got this massive foundation. We are um, so personal and so relevant in these 160 markets. Um, but how do we how do we deepen that connection? Um, I also think commercially, there is a massive opportunity for us to lead in certain areas. And I, I go back to the content and media space. You know, the beautiful thing about us is we've got 160 clubs that are pumping out content left, right, and center every single day. Um, how do we harness that? So I think, as I think to the future, one of the big pivots is gonna be us leading yep. um, and, and being perceived within this hyper-competitive marketplace as a leader in this space. Um, and I think, I think that's not too far down the road. No, absolutely not. Now I think with the minor league baseball, there's also an interesting dichotomy in the fact that the scale is so massive, right? From a league level, you have 160 teams that you're working with on a daily basis versus, say, you know, an NFL 30, yeah. NHL 30, 32. Um, you know, what does that dynamic look like, and how do you lean on these teams to not only help you guys, but have them or have you, them help you? You know, what, yeah. what does that what does that look like? Well, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, the rubber meets the road with yeah. those 160, and we are so incredibly fortunate to have 160 um, hyper successful organizations throughout the country and Canada with our, our club in Vancouver. Um, so it starts there and I think working with them, some of the best ideas come locally, you know, and how do we take some of those best ideas and best practices uh, to, to, to blow out to make something that's national that, that impacts the broader MILB enterprise. 
Um, so the relationship with the clubs is so critically important. Um, and we're very, very fortunate to have some of the best executives in the industry applying their trade in minor league baseball day in and day out across 160 clubs.